Hey, everybody. Welcome to Shaper Sessions. Welcome. And we have a really exciting one for you tonight because we got some new cutters in the store that we're going to talk all about and show off how, what they can do. You couldn't stop playing with those cutters I know. right before I was... we went to air. Jake's looking at these new cutters. <laughs> Can't keep our eyes off them. They're so cool. Uh, we've got six new ones we're going to talk about today. We've got a couple sneak peeks for cutters that are coming down the pipeline. And the main event today is we're going to talk about keyholes. Keyholes are great for mounting cabinets and other things to walls or attaching furniture to itself. And we're going to show you two ways to do it. Yeah. And we're going to go a little bit into how to cut brass, too. Mm -hmm. yep. yep, we're going to do Which we a... haven't done here on Sessions before. Really? No. So 60, we're almost 60 Sessions I in, know. and we haven't cut brass yet. This is exciting. Uh, I got to play with the brass this week, so we're going to show you all the tips that we learned and some things that we already knew that you might have heard of, but that we haven't set on air yet. Uh, then we're going to cut a deep T-slot style keyhole in wood as well. Um, while we're going through the show, same things as usual, please... Uh, Write questions in the comments below the video. Uh, we've got Blake, I think, in the comments today, who's yep. going to be answering as many questions for you as he can live. And then any questions that he thinks Jake and I need to answer, we'll take care of at the end of the show. If you're watching live, if you're watching on demand, we cut that part for the archived version. Uh, but please join us live yeah. next time. It's more fun here. The other thing, of course, is giveaways. What are we giving away, Jake? We're going to give away uh, two of these new cutters and, as always, a swag pack. Right on. Yeah. And to enter that giveaway, please enter answer the poll question at the bottom of the screen, which is, what cutters do you want us to stock next? Uh, we're going to show you some six new good ones, so you might want to hold off on that answer until we show you what we're just adding to the store. Or get in there already anyway. It's a poll question. It's for a giveaway. We'd rather give something away to you than have you answer something that like, yeah. we are already stocking. It doesn't really matter exactly. that much. But Let's just some, give stuff away. If somebody out there has like a secret cutter that they've been using that they want to share with the whole Shaper community, yeah. now's your chance. We yeah. want to hear about it. Yeah, get it in that poll and you know chat about it in the comments. Love to hear it. Um, without further ado, let's show off the good stuff. All right. What have we got today, Jake? Well, we've talked about it plenty, uh, but we have it now in the store, readily available for you to buy. It is the 15-degree dovetail cutter. Great. Let's show this off on the Origin Cam. We talked about this a lot last week when we talked about Johannes Mueller's rising table. Um, we did some sliding tapered dovetails for that. This is the bit that we use in that project, uh, but it's great for plenty of other things. Jake, you've used dovetails quite a lot. Uh, we did a session a long time ago, I a think, very now, long time ago. on what was that ostensibly on? That was about designing in SketchUp, I think. Uh, or was that a no, different it was a one? Dove, it was a dovetail generator that yeah. Noah had made using Fusion 360, mm, mm -hmm. which I believe is still available somewhere on Shaper Hub. But there's also um, a community member that created a whole uh, web-based, what would you call it? Plug Not quite a plugin, but... A dovetail generator, a web-based yeah. dovetail generator yeah. uh, that you can do full through dovetails and blind dovetails. That is awesome. Yeah. I did a dovetail box with Origin, and I drew it all up in Fusion 360, which is another way to do it, but using the generator would be way faster. Mm -hmm. So we should investigate that. We should do a session on that one, Yeah, on the new one. Uh, if you're curious, go to our community channel and just type in dovetail generator. Mm -hmm. I'm blinking on who exactly it was that made it, but it's a really great thing. It'll come up, and also check out our archived sessions at shapertools.com slash sessions for more on projects with this dovetail cutter. All right, what's next? Next up is one of the cutters we're going to be using today is a T-slot cutter. Let's show this off. This, this is a cool one. Yeah, this is actually um, not the exact cutter, but same type of cutter that we use in the premium project for the pen tray, for Noah's pen tray. That's how you get that sliding uh, undercut lid. Mm -hmm. And, of course, keyholes. But anytime you need to make that kind of sliding channel, uh, that's your go-to. Yeah, super good for that. We have, of course, two O-flutes, both mm -hmm. eighth-inch uh, in two different lengths for good reason. We have a half-inch long and a quarter-inch long. What does O-flute mean, Jake? O-flute is a fancy name for a single flute. <laughs> Why do they call it O? I we don't, don't know. I it's don't a know. mystery. I think O-flute means that 
technically it has a little bit more chip clearance room than one single flute. A lot of times you see those single flute cutters with uh, a solid piece of rectangular carbide in them, but these are ground from 100% solid carbide, which is going to get you more chip clearance and the best cut quality. Yeah. Um, I guess they, they don't call it a, a one flute because then it makes, kind of, makes you kind of think of a straight flute. Mm, just one mm-hmm. straight one. Oh, these flute. are yeah, these are up spiral yes. also, and we use them for plastics, soft and hard, and for soft metals. So we're going to be using them today for our brass, which is really exciting. Yeah, uh, worth mentioning. Only non-ferrous metals here. No steel. Nothing, no steel. Nothing that sparks or you need coolant to cut. So mm-hmm. think in the realm of brass, aluminum, copper, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Cool. Ha. All right. Some really crazy eight millimeter bits, uh, eight millimeter shank bits. This is a eight millimeter three flute. Thir- well, okay. Th- little caveat here. This 30, is a mouthful. Thirty-five millimeter cut le- uh, cutting, cut length, cut length, yeah, length, length of, of cut. cut. Uh, Forty. I don't want to mess this up. Forty-two. Forty-two you said earlier. Two millimeter maximum depth. Uh, and why don't you show off that, that off cl- up close just so we can kind of depict exactly why yeah. there's two numbers there. So the actual length of the flute is 35 millimeters. Let's so pop you... over to that origin cam. Oh, yeah. We've got uh, Ned on the switchboard today, and let's give Ned a round of applause. It's his first day. Yeah. So, uh, there might be a couple hiccups, but we're having fun. Um, well, don't yeah. jinx him like that. <laughs> Knock on wood. All right. So I we... can hardly fit this in the camera. I it's know. so long. This is what I like to call Excalibur. Uh, this is an absolute <laughs> joy to use. It's incredibly sharp. It leaves beautiful cuts. I used this on my box project when we were doing the box challenge, mm-hmm. um, and it was just an absolute joy. Uh, be very careful, though, when you unbox this bad boy. It is sharp. <laughs> yeah, I got a little slice on my finger already, honestly. Uh, Whoops. So... The reason we also say that you can go up to 42 millimeters is because that shank is ground down so that you can plunge to a depth of 42 millimeters. You just can't make a finished pass at 42 millimeters. So you have Mm -hmm. to do that in two separate passes. But if you need those real deep tenons or if you're hollowing out a deep box, this is the cutter for you. And last but not least, but certainly not least, a 16 millimeter, 16 by 16 millimeter clearing bit that is also on that eight, uh, eight millimeter shank this is an absolute beast it <laughs> just makes such quick work ned if you wouldn't mind hopping over to our origin cam it makes such quick work of material uh go to our website go to the recommended cutting settings for this on most materials it's like a recommended 12 millimeter depth pass and that is huge. And it, it does really it, rips. It it just does such a wonderful job. Um, Our friend a, Matt here hollowed out oh. basically an eighteen by twelve by one and a half inch depth pocket, which we I have to be very clear would never recommend to anybody. And this guy is absolutely insane. Yeah. But he did it with this cutter as testing, uh, and he did it. Yep. So that is. That's the new lineup. Go check them out. We're really excited about them. Um, you're going to see a lot more of them in our videos coming up. Yeah. Because they're great. Yeah. We're Today, gonna... we're going to focus on the eighth inch O flute, and we're going to drop a sneak peek at a 90 degree engraving bit that we're going to use for a countersink. Um, Yeah, we can show that off now. But two weeks from today, uh, two Thursdays from now, I'm going to do a session on all of these cutters. We're going to dive into even more depth on the ones that we don't cover today or that we haven't covered in the past. Let's take a quick look at this 90-degree engraving cutter on the Origin Cam also. Um, This we've used for a couple of things. It's pretty neat. We've used it for sign making where you need to fold up pieces of like dye bond, Mm -hmm. for instance, uh, which is aluminum clad plastic. You can cut most of the way through and then you get this nice 90 degree V that you can bend corners around. Today we're going to use it to make countersinks, um, helically milled countersinks for the screws on this keyhole plate, which is a really nice finishing cut touch. And I'm just going to show this on the origin cam. This is thing one that we're working on today. A nice milled 100% with origin brass keyhole plate. Um, These are possible to buy 
you can get them from Brusso, our favorite brass hardware manufacturer. But you never know uh, if for your specific project, you want to be really intentional. You never really know if the things that are available on the market are exactly what you're going to want for the cabinet that you're making. Um, a lot of the times I find the pieces on the open market too stout, uh, a little heavy in the hand. And you want to clean that up a little bit, make them feel nice and considered, you yeah. know? Or it's the, a or, fine detail. Or the radius, you know, on some of the cheaper ones, maybe the radius isn't quite consistent, so your mm -hmm. pocket's not going to look super clean. Yeah. Again, if you care this much about what the back of your cabinet looks like... <laughs> then you care about <laughs> your keyhole plates. You yeah. care about your keyhole plates. Uh, so what do you say we get started? Let's do it. Okay. Um, let's switch to the workstation cam here and show off my setup. I've already taped down this piece of brass. It's a small piece of brass. Um, and important note about the brass that we're using, this is 360 brass, which is notable for its machine ability. Uh, there are a lot of different alloys of brass out there. Brass is, I want to say, copper and tin. It's either copper and zinc or copper and tin. One of those is brass, one of those is bronze. But those are just the two main ingredients. Um, we can go back to the main cam. The other ingredients include uh, nickel, for example, some silicon, some lead. Um, not enough to do you any harm, but don't eat it, obviously. It's a metal. Uh, the free machining brasses have a higher lead content, which is a very soft metal, so that means that the cutter is going to be able to more easily go through that brass and make a nice clean cut. So that's what we picked today, and that's what we recommend for Origin. You can get bars of any size and shape in 360 brass. So start with that. Yeah, curveball. Is 360 brass always extruded or is it sometimes cast? Would you have an issue with cutting cast brass? A cast brass is likely to be a different alloy mm -hmm. because the alloy that is most machinable is not likely to also be the most castable. They make sense. brasses and bronzes for casting. They make brasses and bronzes for welding. They make brasses and bronzes for stamping. And then they make brasses and bronzes for machining. Uh, this might be extruded. It might also be rolled. I think this stuff's probably extruded, if I had to guess. Cool. Um, but you can get it in any size that you want to start with. Um, which isn't to say that you can't cut cast brass, just that you should practice first and try out your own cut settings and see how it goes. At the end of the day, it's still a soft metal, and you ought to be able to work with it. Yeah. But for this, we're working with the most easily workable material. Good recommendation. For starters. Moving forward with anything is if it's your first time cutting with it, do a test cut first. Yeah, yeah, get exactly. comfortable with it first before you, you know. Yeah, dive into this your. This isn't our final first piece. time doing this on <laughs> sessions. We do plenty of practice here. I've made a couple of these already this week. So we've got our brass set up on workstation on the shelf. I've already set it up coplanar to the top surface of workstation uh, so that Origin can easily slide over everything. I've already scanned everything in, and if I if we hop over to the uh, origin cam here, I'm just going to go into design mode. I'm going to go into import. And I made this keyhole file in Shaper Labs. We've covered Shaper Labs separately on a couple of other sessions, so we're not going to go into the file creation in depth today. But note that I just saved that from Labs, and it syncs straight to origin. And I'm going to freehand. We don't even need to grid because I'm not trying to cram a bunch of these onto one part. We're just going to freehand drop this onto the center of my piece of brass. Now, we already showed off this eighth inch by quarter inch O flute cutter earlier. Uh, that's what I'm going to use. You want as little stick out as possible on that cutter. Uh, a nice for, sturdy cutter. For yeah. a nice sturdy cutter for maximum stiffness. Right. Um, Important when you're working with brass, I'm going to Z-touch here while we talk about this. Uh, important while you're working with brass is you want to get your speeds right. Uh, the default speeds that Origin is set with are for wood. They're great for wood. Yes. If you try using these speeds in brass, you're probably going to have a bad time. We want to slow those down. I've already slowed those down. You can see the default here for... What is this? The plunge, the default is 15 inches per minute. I'm going to slow that down to 10 and then for the auto feed rate, which is the feed rate traveling across the cut path, the default is 10 inches per minute, and I'm going to slow that down to 5. So looking down our list of 
settings on the left hand side here. We've got our speeds, we've got our Z-touch, we've got our diameter. Um, I want to change this to an inside cut. We're going to cut both this keyhole and these screw holes first. And I want to set my depth. So this piece is an eighth inch thick. And to make sure that we go all the way through, I'm just going to go to 0.1, let's say 0.14. That should be plenty. And there's a good reason that we're cutting the screw holes first. This is a fun little fixturing technique. Um, let's go back to the main cam here for a second. When cutting metals, they're typically smaller parts the cutting forces are also typically higher because they're much harder than wood. So you want to be very, very careful about keeping your material stuck to workstation. Right now we're just using double-sided tape, but when this tiny part is free, that's going to become a problem pretty quickly. Um, when something snaps loose like that, it could get tangled up in the cutter. It's not going to be dangerous, but you risk putting a chip in your final workpiece, which you really don't want um, once it finally snaps loose. So what we're gonna do here today is mill the screw holes first. This is a tip specifically really handy for brass, but you can use it for anything. And then after we've milled the screw holes and the countersinks, we're actually gonna screw that final piece down into the MDF spoil board on workstation shelf. Right on. Is this so, the one you made? What's that? Yeah, that's the one I made. Wow. <laughs> Don't give me a big head. Yeah, I made this one too. This one's this one's really nice. They're they're, they're both, both really, really nice. nice. Jake, get out of here. Is there a difference between the two? I honestly thought you bought this one. Really? <laughs> well, that's I'm honored. Uh, yeah, this is this is why we make here. Yeah, let's show both of these off one more time. I did buy these screws. I didn't make the screws myself. Oh, okay. Now I'm not impressed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's show these off. Um, identical, I would say. Pretty good. Um, we'll do a little bit of cleanup before or after we're done with this also because you might have seen on the workstation cam that brass as it comes from the factory is kind of dirty. It's smooth, but it's kind of dirty. It's tarnished. So we're going to clean that up and give that a nice brushed look after we've cut this out. Curiosity killed me, so I did look it up. Copper okay. and zinc. Copper and zinc. Copper and okay. zinc. And that's brass. Yeah. Okay. Copper and tin is bronze. Okay. Yeah. Cool. The more you know. Um, back to origin cam here. We are in helix mode. You can absolutely helix brass. Um, we're going to helix these screw holes with zero inch offset, just because I know that that's right for these screws, all the way down to 0.14. Um, and these are going to be pretty quick. Normally, Jake steps away to narrate, but I'd say it's probably not important for these. We'll just zip them out real quick. What do you say, Jake? Go for it. Yeah, safety glasses on, especially with brass, especially with metals. I'll just aim the other way. All right. All right, that was easy. And uh, if you were, let's go over to the workstation cam. We can just show off these two holes. If you were to drill these two holes here with a drill press, you'd have to lay it out and you'd have to center punch it and you'd have to mark it. I've made keyhole plates out of brass before and they're just a hassle unless you have like a big mill or a shaper origin. Um, before we move on to the keyhole and the outer perimeter, we're going to swap over to that 90 degree engraving bit that we showed off earlier. We can go back to the main cam, yeah. And uh, we're going to cut those countersinks so that we can use these steel screws that I brought over. Perfect. Thanks, Jake. Both of these are quarter inch shank tools. So they work with our quarter inch collet that comes stock with origin in the States. The T-slot cutter that we're going to use later is an 8mm shank tool, and so to use that you need an 8mm collet. Sometimes we give them away on the show here, but you can also find that in our accessories store, and that'll allow you to use all of these cutters that we just launched. I'm going to change this tip diameter on this engraving cutter to 0 0.02. It's reminding me, this is good, it's reminding me to Z-touch, don't forget. 
Now Origin is automatically sensing the length of the tool in the spindle. Okay, that cut path is where I want it. Zero inch offset, and I know from past cuts that I want this to go down to 0 0.05 inches. So about halfway through this uh, brass plate, that'll give me the right depth and diameter of countersink. Um, this one typically takes a little while longer because it helixes more slowly, so Jake might step away here. All right, here we go. All right, helix is really the perfect thing for this because it's gonna take off just the right amount of material for every pass, speed up the whole operation, and once it reaches the final destination, the final depth, it's gonna do a finish pass, a finish depth pass, so you'll get a nice, consistent uh, bottom of your chamfer, or of your countersink. Nice and steady. When you really think about how slow five inches per minute is. It's creeping along. When it comes to speed, same goes for if you bump the speed up for when you're, say, I don't know, engraving text, something really shallow in plywood or something like that. And if I'm not mistaken, Russ is doing an inside cut for that circle. So, and his bit diameter is 0.02. So he's really just engaging the side profile of that bit, and that's what's giving him a nice chamfer, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's all about it's all about the cutter. Basically, yeah. so I think the cutter has a tip diameter of 0 0.02. I wanted to make sure that I didn't go all the way to the center of that cutter then, because if there's a little flat on the end, which there usually is, honestly, I didn't even check. I just set my cut settings and kind of guessed and checked. Yeah, on this but you one. don't need to set it to zero. And but instance. I don't want to set it to zero in case if there's a little flat on the end of that cutter, I don't want to then get that corresponding little flat at the bottom of my countersink. Yeah. So that's why the 0 0.02. You could also set it to zero and use offsets there, for example. Um, and there's five different ways to calculate a cut. This is just the way that I chose. You could also go based on the outer diameter, and you could figure it out with probably negative offsets in that case. I just got to say, that is a gorgeous yeah, okay. countersink. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> let's pop over to the workstation cam and take a look at this. So we've got two countersinks right here. Um, fun fact about countersinks, I believe it's metric screws that use a 90 degree countersink and inch screws use an 82 degree countersink actually, but it is close enough for us. These are technically not metric screws. They do make metric wood screws. These are inch wood screws. 82 degrees, really? 82 degrees. I don't know why. Don't why? ask me why. Ask, cool. uh, I don't know, Henry Ford or one of those grandfathers of industrialization, you know? Ask Eli Whitney, the inventor of the cotton gin. There you go. How did you know how deep to go? You just kind of wing yeah. it? Yeah, guess and check. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you can always sneak up on it. Yeah, of course, so, you measure the head of your screw, too. Yeah, yeah, you can measure the head of your screw. That's the big variable here is I wasn't confident about the depth on the head of my screw. Um, so I did one to... 0.05 and I measured it with some calipers and it was about 0.02 proud still when I screwed it in. So I went just a little bit farther past that because you don't want these screws to catch on your wall, for example, when you've hung this cabinet and you don't want them to catch on the bottom of origin when you're routing. But we've got this screwed in. It's nice and snug now on my MDF spoil board 
and we can cut this part free, moving origin around without any fear of anything popping up. Cool. Yeah, right on. Um, speaking of good parts and good cuts, I also want to show off, we got some good chips here. So let's go over to the origin cam. This is a little, uh, you might almost compare it to like new agey. This is a little new agey. I'm about to get a little woo woo on us. This is <laughs> intuitive machining. Um, this is what you want. You want to see a chip that is a solid individual piece that's a little bit curled in on itself. Uh, they're all very regular and identical, basically. You don't want powder. Powder means that you are moving too slow through your workpiece. Um, and you don't want big irregular chunks, which mean that you're moving too fast through your workpiece. So a good chip is a sign of a good cut, and these look really good to me. Beautiful. Great. Are you going to go forth with auto, or are you going to do it freehand? A little bit of both. Okay. Um, I like freehand for brass because I feel like I have a little... I like freehand in general, but especially for brass, because I feel like I have a little more direct control. Um, I am guiding origin in the travel direction, and origin's only compensating in the perpendicular direction to get me back on the line. When I'm in auto, origin's doing both directions at once. It's doing perpendicular to the direction of travel and it's doing with the travel. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more calculation involved in that. Um, I find that it's a little bit more uh, touchy when you're moving. But when I get to the corners, I'm going to stop still and use auto to travel around those corners. Perfect. The other thing that I'm going to use auto for is uh, on the finish pass. Because I want that nice, smooth edge right. quality. You might actually, here's the thing that you didn't notice, Jake. These two keyholes are not identical, actually. I, I, I remember this now. So if one I can of these. Guess. Can you guess? All right. One of these I did freehand, and the other one I did with auto mode. What do you think? I think that one was freehand, that one's auto. Okay. Now let's look at the edge quality of these two and see. They're, they're both quite good, and they're very straight lines. But let's see if I can hold this up to the light so that you can get the reflection just right. The one on my right has a little bit more regular of scallops from that machining, and the one on the left has a little bit of irregularity from where my freehand feed was not perfectly even. So on that finish pass, I'm definitely going to use auto to get the best finish edge quality on that's this brass piece. Let's call it character. Character, right. This is something that you can't really see in That's wood. You'll true. never see this in wood, but you will yeah. see it in metals and plastics to some extent. Um, so we're going to use auto for that as well. All right. So let's pop back to this keyhole. I need to change my settings back. Let's see. Oh, I didn't even change my cutter yet. We're too busy talking. Um, Ned, I heard you asked a question about temperature. We've got Ned in the monitor today. What, uh, what was that again? What kind of temps does the brass get to when we're making these cuts? The brass does not get really hot. It shouldn't get really hot. If anything picks up any heat, it'll be the chips. You want all of the heat to come away with the chips um, and not stay in the brass. That's typically how machining works is the heat is evacuated by the chips. Because if you think about it, the chips are the part that are being deformed and being scooped away and being bent and curled up. Um, the brass itself that you're leaving behind isn't really having anything actually done to it. So it doesn't or shouldn't absorb much heat. And if it does, that's a problem. That means that you're actually dwelling. You're going a little bit too slow. Something's rubbing, causing a lot of friction rather than evacuating the heat through those chips. Does that make sense? That makes sense to me. Cool. All right. So let's bop this back up to 0.125. Got that eighth inch bit installed let's do a z touch and um speaking of questions please everybody ask your questions blake's going to write most of those down and we'll save them for the end of the show we'll answer those in live q a so we've got our z touch we've got our inside pass i'm going to do a a small just a 0 0.02 inch offset because I don't have much room, and also because I'm going to be going pretty slow, so I don't really need it. Um, and it just so happens that 0.075, I'm actually going to change this to 0.07, but 
That's a little more than halfway through our part. I'm going to do this in two roughing passes and one finish pass. Um, on the first pass, you'll notice that I don't spend all of my time in auto mode. Uh, I spend some time in auto mode, but on the finish pass, I'm going to try to spend more time in auto mode. Wonderful. Cool. You ready to rip? Let her rip. All right. Let's, uh, let's do it. I want to double check. Something worth noting and a big reason why we dial back that plunge depth, the pl or plunge speed rather, the plunge speed is from the top surface of your material into it. So when you're diving into something dense like brass, you want to really make sure that you're nice and planted, you're putting plenty of down pressure onto origin and you have control of it before you do so. And I can't see exactly where he's at, but I feel like he's on the second pass. That sounds to me like he's on the finish pass. Yep, there it is. And he was doing a little bit of mix of both, I imagine. A little bit of auto, a little bit of freehand. I totally lied, Jake. I auto-locked. Oh, all right. Well, I that... forgot that that's what I had done earlier, because on the well, outside pass, I'm going to do a lot of manual cutting. Um, but on this, I auto-locked. Yeah. That's true, and you're cutting the actual keyhole part. So, auto-lock, for anyone that doesn't know, instead of having to hold down that green button the whole time if you double tap on the plunge it will lock auto on and you can just carry on without having to hold the green button i'll walk away so you can carry on mm -hmm. all right we're gonna do three outside passes now we're gonna do a roughing pass i'm gonna set this again to 0.02 at half depth we're gonna do a roughing pass at full depth and then we're gonna do a finishing pass at full depth Oh, not inside. We want that to be outside. Here we go. All right. I heard there might have been a question about sheet metal versus thicker plate material. Yes, I believe you could cut sheet metal as long, you know, as long as it is able to be held down properly with double-sided tape start getting a little too thin it might start peeling up on itself um, and so instead of cutting creating chips you're pulling at it especially with an upcut bit uh, but a certain you know a thick enough piece of, of sheet should be just fine And again, folks, we're always, we're only keeping, we only use non-ferrous metals. That means aluminum, brass, copper, no steel, nothing that sparks, and nothing that requires lubricant to cut. Origin and, and uh, cutting fluid do not mix. You should never need to use it. Nothing like a uh, finished pass in brass on live television <laughs> to, to lock in your focus. For the folks at home, it is uh, so, we're used to using Origin every day. 
And we'd like to think we've gotten pretty good at it. The second you sit down in front of a camera and have to do it live, <laughs> it's usually pretty tense. Alright, there it is. You might have noticed. Got just a little bit too far ahead of the corrective range there. Ah. That'll happen, but look at those chips. They're good chips. Beautiful I've turned chips. you into a chip guy. Yeah, look at these. That's, well, they're stuck to my double-sided tape. Um, but let's uh, go to the workstation cam. Look at this keyhole Any as we... You Pull that workstation that cam off. in just a bit. Uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. Oh boy, this is always. Uh, Hang on. Oh, we're going for a ride. Well, it's uh, the top is super locked. We're actually gonna we're gonna keep it right here. Sorry, folks. We'll keep it right here, but uh, we'll unscrew this, pop this off. I notice we've been getting a lot of questions. That's good. Make sure you get those questions in in the chat. Um, Blake's gonna write those down, and we'll answer as many as we can in the period after the show. Ned's been feeding us a couple as well. Don't go too crazy, Ned, because we won't have anything to talk about when we're done. All right. Here we go. This is uh, completely uncleaned up. So let's actually, yeah, there we go. Workstation cam's pretty good. We got that. You can see, though, there's uh, some tarnish on the front. You want to be very careful of these sharp edges. This is something that you don't get with wood or plastics. Once you cut metal, it leaves what's called a burr. So uh, you can slice yourself pretty easily. And what we're going to do to take care of this, this is why we set up the bench cam today. Um, I've got some needle files out. Those are going to help us clean like some real detail stuff that I'm going to do after the show. But as a, as a quick cleanup, I've got this sanding pad. You want to make sure you go in nice, straight, forward and back lines. And honestly, this is heating up the brass more than any of that cutting did. Because it's all about that friction. Flip it over. Hit the other side. Even though nobody's ever going to see this other side, I guess. Hit the other side. You can hit the edges if you want. But you can see that just completely transformed that keyhole we can show this off on the origin cam again from that kind of tarnished gross looking very industrial brass to that nice brushed look and the key to that is keeping those lines nice and straight the brass is nice and flat it's not gouged or anything from right. the factory it's just got that tarnish you got to take that tarnish off that is beautiful yeah what do you think jake i think you have outdone yourself all right i love to hear that let's peel this off and what do you say we move on to keyhole number two, keyhole style two? Let's do it. For the second one, we're going to use the new keyhole cutter, which is using that eight millimeter collet, uh, which can be bought in the collet kit on our store. Uh, it comes with every possible collet for origin, so why not get it? What collets are those? We got five collets. That is Pop a quiz. quarter, uh, no, we're, yeah, quarter inch. There's a quarter inch in there? There's a quarter inch an in there. An additional quarter inch, an eighth inch. A three millimeter, six millimeter, and eight millimeter. There you go. That's everything. Um, we find the eighth inch really useful. We haven't done an inlay show in a long time. The last inlay no. show I think we did was with Ramon. Yeah. Which was a great time. Um, but we love that eighth inch collet or three millimeter collet if you're in Europe or if you have access to Euro bits for inlay and engraving. Nice small work um, because you're going to save a lot of money and you're going to get a much better inlay quality with a smaller, especially down cutting, smaller bit. And then the, the quarter inch uh, never hurts to have another collets are, um, they are in practice, they are a wear item eventually. Yeah. Uh, eventually they'll wear out because they do experience friction. You're loading and unloading cutters. You're clamping and unclamping them. It's nice to have a spare one of those. Um, six millimeter kind of broadens your range also to some of those European cutters. 
and then the eight millimeter opens you up to all of these crazy cutters that we're releasing now that dovetail cutter the t-slot cutter the eight millimeter by 35 millimeter long reach finishing yep. cutter which is a monster and then that 16 by 16 cutter as well which is a great one to have in your toolkit all right We've got a question. Can you use a quarter inch keyhole cutter from other manufacturers? I don't know what other manufacturer that is, so it's hard to answer. The thing that I will specify about our keyhole cutter that I'm not sure about with anyone else's is that ours is center cutting, which means that you don't have to clear out the slot before you plunge, which is very, very important. Um, yeah. If you don't have a center cutting router bit, when you plunge with Origin, it's not going to cut. It's just going to get jammed up. Um, yeah. So you definitely want that center cutting router bit. I would say just buy ours for ease. You know, you want to, my philosophy in the shop is go with what I know will work. There you go. You know, not, I don't like taking chances when I'm trying to get something done. All right. So we're going to pop this out quick and easy call it change. One more time. Why don't we remind folks? What we're giving away. Oh, yeah. Because there might be some folks that just logged on. Yes. Uh, if you are just logging on or missed the beginning of the show, make sure to answer that question at the bottom of your screen so you can put your name in to win two of our new bits. One new bit and one sneak peek. That's true. One totally new bit one and one secret that hasn't even dropped. On yet. Don't tell the boss we're giving one away. <laughs> and of course, a swag pack, which comes with a shop banner, a hat. And a couple stickers. Here, let's take a look at this keyhole cutter one more time on the Origin cam before I pop it in there. You can see it's got that nice undercut. This is technically also a single flute. It's got just one flute, it but is. it's not an O flute. It's just got one square edge. So we wouldn't call that an O flute. It's just a one flute, I guess, cutter. Pop right, that but one flute together. makes you think it's straight. And it is. And it is. And it is. I don't know. All right. We got that in. Uh, let's see, back to workstation. This is a, well, it's a T-slot. So, you know, what diameter do you really put in? I think the sure. shank on this one is five millimeters. So we're going to say five millimeters, and it's going to Z-touch for us. And uh, kind of like the the brass keyhole that we did. Uh-oh, we forgot to turn off the air compressor. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Um, kind of like the brass keyhole we did. This is just a scrap piece for test, um, just to show off the capabilities here. So we're not trying to put this exactly in the middle of anything. If we did, we would go ahead and make a grid, make a specific design. But what we're going to do here is just scan this and drop this keyhole on this piece of cherry so that you can see how this cutter works. So we're going to make that new scan. You can see my board now. Um, the absolute easiest way there, way, you can get way more complex than this, but the absolute easiest way that I've found to make a keyhole slot is to make a narrow rectangle. So I'm going to make a rectangle, let's actually say width zero. Whoops. Width zero. Let's make the height one inch so it's going forward and back. Please and this is going to make a super narrow rectangle, the narrowest possible rectangle. Perfect. And I'm just going to drop this here. I like using this center end anchor point of whatever end you want to locate. So I'm going to drop that, place. And this is just free floating. Um, we've done shows on how to grid and align things before. So if you had a project, obviously you would want to really align this to something in reality. But we're just showing off. And I'm going to go over to cut. I know that I want a 10 millimeter depth of cut. I'm going to do an online cut for this one. Zero inch offset. You don't really use offsets for online cuts. This is still five millimeters. We already Z-touched. That's good. And plunge and auto speed. Yeah, I'm going to keep that plunge speed at 10. Um, this auto speed, I'm going to bump back up to the default, even though I'm not going to use it. For this keyhole cutter, um, we're going pretty deep, and it's center cutting, but it's got some funky geometry. So it's not going to clear those chips as well as a good up spiral router bit. So I'm going to plunge a little bit slower. 
auto, I'm going to feed this by hand, so I'm not really going to use auto anyway, but auto you could use the same settings as you would for, uh, for regular wood. Really? You're not so. going to use auto for this? Hmm? You're not going to use auto? I'm not going to use auto for All this. Right. Yeah, I stay, just... my Rust Pro tip is stay around the outside corners and it doesn't jump on you. I love it. So Worth mentioning, too, the reason you can't just create a single line mm -hmm. using like the pen tool on Toolcad uh, is because that won't allow you to retract in the same place. Mm -hmm. Right, so you have, yeah. to, you have to make that rectangle to be able to come all the way back around All town. the way around, yeah. You can't do just one line. All right, ready to cut this? Let it rip. Let's go. It's going to be quick. That's that. Let me vacuum this out quickly again. If this is deeper than you technically need. Let's go over to the workstation cam and we can show this off. There you go. Oh, that's not a great angle. We've got this. Uh, oh boy. I'm gonna have to really peel this off here. Let's get the. Uh, let's get a little pry action going. There we go. Always have something to peel up your double-sided tape. And we've got a nice keyhole. Put a bolt in there, hang something from a wall. I made some clocks recently. I used this to hang the clock on the wall without any extra mounting hardware. It's really nice because this clock was a solid piece of wood. I just put a keyhole in the back. I put a screw and a drywall anchor in the wall. And I was all set. Perfect. Yeah, right on. Um, hey, Jake, did your monitor battery die? It did. Yeah, mine just did too. <laughs> All right, we're uh, we're winging it. Let's just wing it till the end of the show. We'll All right. uh, we'll replace those during Q and A. Yeah, let's go back to that. Goose uh, told us that he replaced the batteries. Goose said he replaced the batteries. Goose is uh, out of office today, so we can make fun of him as much as we want. <laughs> Anything else that we should cover today? No, before I mean, we wrap. Keyholes two ways. What more do you want? Yeah, keyholes two ways. Bunch of new cutters. Any cutter that we didn't. Uh, dive into in depth today. I'm going to talk more about in two weeks. We're going to cover the rest of those. What are the rest of those again? We've got big eight millimeter clearing and finishing cutters. That's going to be fun. Yeah. We've got another eighth inch O flute that's a little bit longer. We could probably gloss over that one because we spent so much time on the eighth inch today. We got a dovetail cutter and we got the T slot cutter. We talked about that. I think that covers it. Yeah. There we go. So we'll talk about roughing. In two weeks. There Talk about clearing out big Roughing and clearing. And, how, to, uh, how to pocket. Yeah, yeah. We'll see what we can do. That'll be really fun. We're going to make some big chips there. Uh, thank you for joining us. We'll be back in two weeks with the next Shaper Session. We'll see you next time. Cheerio.